At the time of recording this video, the Hope Diamond is worth approximately one quarter of a billion dollars, and it's arguably one of the most famous gemstones on planet Earth. Of the many people who've owned the diamond over the years, perhaps the most curious is a man called Harry Winston, if only because he donated the hummingbird-sized gem to a museum via the post. Also, it was apparently cursed. All right, so who is Harry Winston? Um, well, he spends most of his time being dead now, but when he wasn't as dead, he was a jeweler who traveled the world uh, procuring diamonds and other gemstones um, to sell in his ultra exclusive um, uh, jewelry stores that are catered almost entirely to uh, the snobbiest and fart smellingest of rich folk. And his modus operandi to make money was to go to estate sales, you know, where people had died or were just, like, you know, just selling off the stuff they didn't want anymore, and buy job lots of jewellery. He would then take the gemstones out of those pieces of jewellery and set them in more modern, stylish pieces and then sell them for a huge markup. And um, like, it's noted that even before he was like a seasoned expert and one of the most respected people in the field, like um, Winston had just an eye for a good deal. And the story goes at 12 years old, he was able to sell a piece of junk costume jewelry for about $800 after realizing that the piece of gemstone in it was real. So he bought the, he bought the costume jewelry, took the gemstone out, cleaned it up, took it to a jeweler's, sold it for $800. And that's basically just a small scale version of what he did as an adult. And whilst he largely just bought large collections of jewels and reset them, he was known to, on occasion, become enamoured with a single gemstone, which he would pursue sometimes across the world to try and obtain it for his private collection. And it's noted that sometimes he would trade literal handfuls of smaller gemstones for a larger one that he wanted for a particular piece. You look at it and go, well, you've got one big jewel here that you could sell for a couple million, or I can give you like 20 smaller jewels you could sell for a couple hundred thousand each with the right setting. So you're going to make more money off this, but like Winston knew that with his the prestige about his name and his skill and his reputation, he could make that singular gemstone worth way more than all the smaller ones just by putting it in the right piece. So yeah, I'm guessing that's what he did with the Hope Diamond. Yes, it is. And the story goes that in 1949, Harry Winston decided, you know what? I want to have just one of the biggest, most expansive collections of giant fuck-off gems in the world. And he bought the Hope Diamond and he made it the focal point of a private collection of his, dubbed the Court of Jewels. It's one of those things like he could have sold it for many millions of dollars, but he knew that like just having the Hope Diamond as part of his like, you know, private collection just increased his prestige more. He like mentioned that he donated it. Yeah. And that's this is the part of the story people would expect me to say that Harry Winston jealously guarded this just smog-esque hoard of gems for the rest of his life. No, quite unexpectedly, he just donated the Hope Diamond to the Smithsonian. Seemed just like, oh yeah, you know what, here it is, the biggest diamond in the world, have it, I don't want it anymore. And the Smithsonian were quite happy to take the diamond, but they were worried about how Winston would get it to them. To which he responded, don't worry, I sent it in the post. <laughs> why? <laughs> do you know why? Why in the post? Do you know why, Nisha? Why not in the post? And I shit you not folks at home that Harry Winston really did send a quarter of a billion dollars worth of diamond in the post. Uh, I believe the post was like $2.44 as well, for anyone curious. And you'll probably find lesser fact websites and channels saying that Winston sent the diamond in the post with nothing but $2.44 in postage. But uh, he did pay a little bit more than that to the tune of about $142 extra to insure the package for a million dollars. But even still, I don't trust Amazon to send my fucking like coffee in the post without some bastard nicking it. But Harry Winston had complete faith in the United States Postal Service and it would seem um, one of his assistants because he didn't even post it himself. He put it in the package and then gave it to an assistant who didn't know it had a diamond in it and told them, just, just post this for me if you can to the Smithsonian. I'm like, oh, okay, sir. Uh, to, if you can get insurance, get some insurance for it, but it's fine. God. And just now think about how fucking minted you have to be to willingly hand off one of the biggest diamonds on the planet to like just a random person who works in your office. Like, just post that for me. But it's also that thing as well of, it's so unexpected that it's not gonna get stolen. No one expects there to be a like a quarter billion dollars worth of diamond in a fucking brown box. 
So nobody who was handling the package knew it was an expensive diamond? Nope, nobody handling the package knew what it contained. They just knew that it was a special delivery. And the guy who delivered it to the Smithsonian, a postman called James G. Todd, um, had no idea about its contents until a curator at the Smithsonian opened it in front of him and went, oh, here it is, the Hope Diamond. My God. <laughs> he was like... Holy shit. What? <laughs> and this is where the cursed part of the diamond comes in. Uh, because there is a mystique about the Hope Diamond, because of course there is. It's a giant whack-off diamond with a long and illustrious, sometimes sordid history behind it. Whenever someone says something's cursed, and then you look it up and go, what happened? It's like, well, someone touched it once and they died. It's like, <gasps> oh no! It's like, did you know once, like, someone walked past this building and tripped on a paving stone? Haunted, cursed, <laughs> cursed building. <laughs> And in that vein, have you been anywhere? That's, have you been anywhere cursed, or have you got anything that's supposedly cursed, or something that people are really superstitious about? There's a doll that lives on the Queen Mary ship that's supposedly haunted. Just throw it overboard. <laughs> so you just look at it. Go, if it's if it's that haunted, just throw it overboard. Let the fucking let the fucking sharks deal with it. Because this YouTuber that I watch who does paranormal stuff, she went on a tour on the okay. ship and she filmed this doll and it's literally locked in like a box. Oh. Like sort of a prison cell. And you can just see its face poking out <laughs> through the window. And apparently the story is like she occasionally sits down. Do you know what the actual story there is? It's the person who cleans that dollhouse out sometimes sits her down when he puts it back. There was a story a couple of years ago about a, a piece in the, the, the London Natural History Museum that was turning. Like, it was turning while on full display in the museum. Like, people could see it turn. And if you showed, like, time-lapse footage of the CCTV, you could see this object turn on camera. And people were like, oh my god, it's haunted. Look at this haunted object. It turns out, no, they were drilling a couple of miles away, and they were just causing vibrations that went through the building. <laughs> That's the thing, like, when something spooky happens, there is always a reasonable always. explanation for it. But I can see why the person donning the CCTV might have shit their pants when they saw that. Whenever I think of stuff like that, I always think back to the film Signs. We have, like, Joaquin Phoenix just watching TV and then the alien turns up and he's like... <gasps> and then you see him, like, he smash cuts to him, like, with a tinfoil on his head. <laughs> We need to discuss how cursed was this diamond. Um, so cursed that newspapers reporting on the story after the fact criticised Winston for sending it in the post because he didn't give the postman a chance to not handle it. That's how cursed, it was so cursed that people were like, you, well, if you're going to have someone pick it up, at least let them know what it is so that they can make the decision to handle it for themselves. They want to risk being cursed. And for the people out there wondering, well, did anything happen to, to Mr. Todd? Um, a lot happened to Todd because it's noted that um, just a year after he'd handled the Hope Diamond without realising it, he'd been involved in two separate car crashes, um, his house burned down, his wife died of a heart attack and he walked outside one day to find that for some inexplicable reason his dog had strangled itself to death. Oh my god. And to Todd's credit, he didn't really believe in the curse and when he was asked about all these unfortunate incidents that befell him after the fact, um, he merely responded, well my life could be worse. And to which I've got to say, well, it could have been, but it could have been a damn sight better as well. <laughs> you have to give him props for being that positive. It's like his wife died, he was in two car crashes, his house burned down, his dog's dead. But it's like, it could be worse. I, I wouldn't like to imagine how it could be worse, but I guess he's right. 